The Lord be with you. Welcome to another hymn study. We're looking at the hymn of the day for Pentecost 4. And this hymn is Creator Spirit by Whose Aid. This is number 500 in our service book. It's in the Pentecost section of hymns. And the author is uh, a former priest, Archbishop uh, Rabanus Morris. Well, let's talk about him for just a moment before we look at the hymn. He was born a long, long time ago, 1,000 years before the Declaration of Independence was signed. Born in 776 and died 856. Uh, from northwest Germany, uh, when he grew up, he became the abbot of a monastery in Fulda, Germany, and eventually was elevated to Archbishop, uh, serving in the city of Mainz. Uh, Mainz, a uh, big city on the Rhine River in Germany. 776 to 856 puts him in the middle of the reign of Charlemagne, uh, this is Charles the Great, uh, Carolus Magnus. Uh, and, and so the era is sort of called the Carolingian era. And I only mention that because I think Charlemagne gets overlooked for the way he unified the Holy Roman Empire. He was the first emperor of the Holy Roman Empire, which primarily from our understanding, was Italy, Germany, and the Germanic regions, and France. If you can ever get Italians, Germans, and French to agree on something, you're doing a big, big thing. So he unified that region, very powerful, also very devout. Uh, in his practice of Catholicism. This is not Roman Catholicism. This is just general Catholicism. The Roman Catholic Church did not begin until the 1000s, when the church split between East and West. I know that's another podcast for us. But he brought unity, and one of the things that Charlemagne did, <laughs> he unified the season of Advent in some parts of Christianity. Advent was six Sundays. In other parts, it was one Sunday. So to bring unity, he made it four. Advent beginning on that first Sunday uh, after St. Andrew's Day, November 30th. So Charlemagne did a lot for the church, and one of the major figures in the Carolingian era was Rabanus Maurus, Archbishop of Mainz. We have three hymns of his in our service book. All three are Holy Spirit hymns, Pentecost hymns. 498, 499, Come Holy Ghost, Creator Blessed, and number 500, Creator Spirit by His Aid. So uh, I would say that the proclamation of the work of the Holy Spirit may have been uh, right in uh, Rabanus Morris's wheelhouse. Uh, that was his thing. And you and I uh, are blessed uh, to receive this proclamation. The hymn is primarily built on Romans chapter 8, verse 9. So I'm going to read a little bit of Romans chapter 8 for us. And uh, maybe uh, these words can run in the back of our mind as we're looking at this hymn. St. Paul says, You, however, are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit, 
if in fact the Spirit of God dwells in you. Anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. If the Spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his Spirit who dwells in you. I really like that last verse. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, if the spirit of the Father who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead, the Father who raised Jesus from the dead, the Father will also give life to your mortal bodies. The Father gives life to us through his spirit that dwells in us. There's so much richness there. The spirit dwells in us. The gift of the spirit that you and I receive in baptism. The baptismal grace that is renewed daily. That reminds us that we belong to the Lord. All right, so we have four verses in this hymn. Again, we'll go verse by verse. In the description below, you'll find a link so you can listen to this hymn. Here's verse one. Creator spirit, by whose aid the world's foundations first were laid, come, visit every humble mind. Come, pour your joys on humankind. From sin and sorrow set us free. May we your living temples be. Creator spirit. Now maybe you scratch your head and say, well, I thought God the Father was the one who did the creating work at the beginning. Well, yes. But everyone was there. God spoke, God used word to bring into being all that is made. And the Spirit of God was hovering over the waters. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit were all present at the foundation of the world. But we are praying for the Spirit to come and visit and pour, visit every humble mind, pour your joys on humankind, maybe bringing in other words of St. Paul, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, chastity, the fruit of the Spirit. This daily gift that we have but this daily gift that we also ask for. Father, do not abandon me, but pour your spirit out upon me daily that I can practice all that I believe. We'll get to that in another verse. But we want the spirit to be with us. It's maybe kind of what we find in the Lord's Prayer God's will is done, whether we want it done or not. But we pray in this petition that his will would be done among us. God's kingdom is going to come, whether you're ready or not. But we pray in this petition that God's kingdom would indeed come among us. God's going to do what God is going to do. But he delights to hear his children pray. He wants us to speak to him, to give him our joys, our sorrows. He wants to hear what we have to say. May we your living temples be 
that the Spirit would indeed visit us and abide in us and move us. That the Spirit would move our actions. That the Spirit would be behind every word we say. Verse 2. O source of uncreated light, the bearer of God's gracious might, thrice holy fount, thrice holy fire, our hearts with heavenly love inspire, your sacred healing message bring to sanctify us as we sing. The portion of this verse that I want to draw our attention to is maybe what's the least clear. Thrice holy font, thrice holy fire. Well, thrice is three. Holy fount and holy fire. If something is holy, it is set apart. Holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit is set apart. It's different, right? Tons of gods in the world. Only one who is holy, who is set apart. There's only one Savior. He is set apart. Jesus came fully, God and fully man at the same time. He lived as one of us. He suffered and endured and felt all that we suffer, endure, and feel. Yet he remained God, fully divine. The Spirit, he is different. The Spirit leads us to remember the great workings and teachings of our Savior. Thrice holy fount. The fount is uh, the source. Yes, God the Father working his work of creation. Jesus Christ, the source, the author and perfecter of our faith. The Spirit who is the Lord and giver of life. That fount, that source that we go back to. Thrice holy fire. You know, fire gives light. It gives heat. It's useful for purifying. Three great uses of fire. Uh, we could also maybe think of the fire at the burning bush when God revealed his identity to Moses. I am the God of your fathers. The fire of the Spirit at Pentecost. The fire came down. The apostles were able to speak. The crowds were able to hear. So fire is very useful. And we have all of that in this verse. Verse 3, giver of grace, descend from high. Your sevenfold gifts to us supply. Help us eternal truths receive and practice all that we believe. Give us yourself that we may see the glory of the Trinity. A couple of things here. Let's start with those sevenfold gifts. I think we've talked about this before. Probably when we were uh, examining our Pentecost hymn of the day. But these sevenfold gifts, this comes out of Isaiah chapter 11. And I'll read for you. There shall come forth a shoot from the stump of Jesse. And a branch from his roots shall bear fruit. And the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. That's one. 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding, of counsel and might, of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. And his delight shall be in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge by what his eyes see or decide disputes by what his ears hear. But with righteousness he shall judge the poor and decide with equity for the meek of the earth. He shall strike the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips he shall kill the wicked. I read a little bit more just to finish the sentence and because who doesn't want to hear prophecies about our Lord Jesus, those sevenfold gifts of the Spirit, all of that was found in Jesus. The branch that comes from the root of Jesse. Jesse, the father of David. David, the father of Jesus. Jesus possessing those sevenfold gifts that we read in Isaiah 11. Then this beautiful idea, help us eternal truths receive and help us practice all that we believe. I think this is a key idea in Christianity and one that resonates with me is that God gives us a lot of things that are hard to understand. He gives us things that we don't want to understand. He gives us things that don't make sense. But these are eternal truths. Help us to receive them. It's not help us to unlock them. Help us to crack the code of these eternal truths. Help us to solve. In Christianity, we're not trying to solve for X. It's not about the right formula. Leave that for the beauties of math and science. But we are receiving eternal truths. The Trinity is one of them. The working of the Holy Spirit is another. The love of Jesus Christ for sinful humanity another eternal truth. Help us to receive them. And then, as we receive, help us practice all that we believe. It's been said elsewhere that in the Christian church, we exercise our faith exercise, get our, our heart beating, get our blood flowing, get our lungs working. We exercise our faith or we practice our faith. And what's the beautiful thing about practice? Maybe you make a mistake, but you keep practicing. You practice and you practice so that you learn and develop your skills. Develop your skills in serving. Develop your skills in teaching. Develop your skills in listening. Develop your skills in speaking an encouraging word. Help us to practice all that we believe. And yes, maybe you make a mistake. You say the wrong thing at the wrong time. In trying to do something helpful, 
you go faster than the other person and your helpful word, your helpful work only inflicts more pain. The Holy Spirit comes to us, visits and pours his grace upon us. So he brings us what we need. Spirit of understanding, skill, fear of the Lord, eternal truths that God brings to us that we can grow into. All right, verse four. Immortal honor, endless fame, attend the Almighty Father's name. The Savior Son be glorified, who for all humankind has died. To you, O paraclete, we raise unending songs of thanks and praise. One of those triangle verses, those doxological verses where we stand in respect of the Lord, Father, Son, and Paraclete. Right? Rabanus Morris gives us one of those different terms. Before we talk about that, look at what we're giving to the Lord. Honor, fame, glory, eternal thanks and praise. Paraclete. It can be translated as counselor or comforter. And those are close. There are other words for those terms, but maybe the best translation for paraclete is paraclete. So you have to learn, what is this? John is the only gospel writer to use that term paraclete when talking about the Spirit. Jesus says, I will send you another paraclete, another counselor. Jesus is a great counselor. But he knows that in a little while, he, he says this before the passion, when he's with the disciples in the upper room, before things really get going. I'm going to leave. Don't be afraid. If I don't go, then I won't be able to send you another counselor, but I am going and I will send you the Spirit, another counselor, a comforter. So that's what we have. I've said it before, and <laughs> I pray I'll say it until I die. The job of the Holy Spirit is to lead us to Jesus. The Almighty Father, the Savior Son, the Paraclete. We take comfort in who the Father and the Son are and what they do. And it's the Spirit's job to remind us of what a God we have, of what a God who claims us, us, who, as we're talking about in our practice, sometimes fail. And sometimes we get things right. Sometimes we do give great witness to our loving Lord, this triune God. So that's our hymn study for the third Sunday after Pentecost. I take that back. The fourth Sunday after Pentecost. I appreciate your time and watching. I hope you enjoy these. Again, the uh, link to uh, the hymn that you can hear uh, is below. Thanks for your time. We'll see you again. Bye-bye.